This video is a guide to Minecraft 1.19 The Wild Update. This video will explain how to find all the new blocks, items, and mobs. There are a lot of additions, so this video will try to summarize the 1.19 update so you can easily step into it and play. If you want a more detailed look at some of these additions, I have a playlist of 18 videos for the 1.19 update. The easiest way to explain this update is through the two new biomes as most of the blocks and mobs are in these biomes. There are a few exceptions to this. Let's start with the mangrove swamp. This is a new biome that will be covered with mud and patches of grass. There will be a dense forest composed of the new mangrove tree. Also the frog can be found in this biome. The mangrove swamp can be found in warmer regions, usually next to the jungles or deserts. The mud block is a new block in the game. The only place it is found is in the mangrove swamp. Swamp. It will cover the surface down to stone, so it will be several layers deep. The mud can be mined by hand or tool and will drop the mud block. You can create mud blocks by applying water bottles to dirt, coarse dirt, and rooted dirt. One of the uses of mud is that you can place it above a block that has a pointed dripstone underneath. It will turn the mud block into clay, making this the only way to make renewable clay. The mud block can be crafted with the mangrove root to get a muddy mangrove root. Also, wheat and mud can be crafted together to get a packed mud block. The packed mud block is a decorative block. Four packed mud can be crafted together to get four mud bricks. A mud brick is also a decorative block that can be crafted or put into the stone cutter to get a mud brick slab, mud brick stairs, and mud brick walls. The mangrove tree has an assortment of blocks that generate as part of it. These include the mangrove leaves, vines, mangrove logs, mangrove roots, mangrove propagals, moss carpet, and muddy mangrove roots. The mangrove tree is different from other trees in the game as it will have a shorter trunk and from the trunk the mangrove roots will branch out in different directions touching the ground and under the mangrove roots will be the muddy mangrove roots. The mangrove logs can be crafted into mangrove planks, mangrove wood, and mangrove versions of other wood items like the mangrove boat. The mangrove roots will drop as a block if mined by hand or tool the axe is the quickest to use. The mangrove root can be placed in the composter, having a 30% chance to increase the compost level. It also can be put into the furnace to smelt 1.5 items. The muddy mangrove roots are a decorative block and will generate where the mangrove roots touch the mud blocks. The mangrove propagals is a sapling of the mangrove tree. It can grow at the bottom of the mangrove leaves and can drop when the mangrove leaves decay or break. Bone meal can be applied to the mangrove leaves to generate mangrove propagals underneath the leaves. The mangrove propagals will have an age when it is growing off the mangrove leaves, so you have to let it grow to a certain age to break it and get a propagal. The mangrove propagal can be bought from the wandering trader for 5 emeralds. This is the only way to get it outside the mangrove swamp. Next is the frog. The frog will only appear in two biomes, the mangrove swamp and the swamp biome. The frog will come in three colors depending on the biome. Orange is temperate, green is cold, and white is warm biomes. The frog will jump, croak, and swim around the biome. The frog does not have any drops if killed. The frog can be placed on a lead and will follow the player if they are holding a slime ball. The frogs can be bred using slime balls that will enter them into love mode. The pregnant frog will try to find a water source ball with air above and spawn a frog spawn on the surface of the water. From there, the frog spawn will take 10 minutes to spawn 2-6 to six tadpoles. Tadpoles have to stay in water or else they will die. The tadpole can be picked up from the bucket of water to get a bucket of tadpoles. This will allow you to transport tadpoles to another biome if you want a specific color. The tadpoles will take 20 minutes to spawn into a frog. Feeding slime balls can reduce this time by 10%. One unique ability of the frog is they can use their tongue to attack small slimes and magma cubes. With slimes, they will drop slime balls. Magma cubes will produce a new block, the frog light. The frog light will emit a light level of 15. The frog light will come in three colors depending on the color of the frog. White frogs will drop pearlescent or purple. Green frogs will drop verdant or green. Orange frogs will drop okra or yellow colored frog lights. If you've liked what you've seen so far, you can subscribe and hit the bell notification to get more tutorials, guides, and let's plays. The other biome is the new biome, the deep dark biome. This will be a new underground biome located near bedrock. The surface will be covered with the new skulk blocks and it is the only place the ancient city is found. One thing that is unique about the deep dark biome is that no mobs can spawn in this biome. Only wardens can spawn through the skulk shrine. 
shrieker. There's also no light source in the deep dark biome unless there is lava in it. The first block found in this biome is the skulk block. This is a black block that has blinking light blue spots on it. If it is broken it will drop 1 XP. With all of the skulk blocks the quickest tool to mine them is the hoe and they have to be mined with the silk touch enchanted tool to drop as a block. The Skulk Vein is similar to the Glow Lightion as it can be placed on multiple sides of a block. It doesn't emit a light level and won't spread like Glow Lightion. The Skulk Catalyst is a new block that can generate Skulk features when a mob that drops experience is killed in range of the Catalyst. When the mob dies within range of the Catalyst, it will replace the blocks with Skulk Blocks or Skulk Veins. The way the mob dies can be in any manner. Most of the blocks on the surface and in all three dimensions can be replaced by the Skulk Catalyst. The Skulk Catalyst can also generate both a Skulk Sensor and a Skulk Shrieker. How this happens is that when a mob dies on a Skulk block, it has a 1% chance to generate a Skulk Shrieker and 9% chance to generate a Skulk Sensor. The Skulk blocks can continue to keep spreading as there is a bubbling charge that travels through the blocks trying to find replaceable blocks. An important detail is that the Skulk Shriekers generated through the Catalyst or placed by the player cannot spawn Wardens. If you break the Skulk Catalyst, it will drop 20 XP. The Skulk sensor will detect vibrations within a 9 block radius and emits a redstone signal. The vibration could be a lot of different actions like walking, placing blocks, destroying blocks, or opening containers. The vibrations will range from 0 with sneaking to 15 with opening a chest. The redstone signal the Skulk sensor emits will depend on the distance it is from the sensor and the vibration. The farther the distance, the weaker the redstone signal will be, and if walking on a sensor, it will be stronger. A comparator facing out from the sensor will give a redstone signal of the vibration. It will output the same signal no matter the distance from the sensor. A skull sensor can also be waterlogged, which will make the sensor silent, but it can still emit a redstone signal. The skull shrieker will be a block that can summon a warden. If a vibration is detected by a skull sensor, it can send a signal to the skull shrieker. It will increase the warning level by 1. When the warning level reaches 4, it will spawn a warden. The Skulk Shrieker can also be activated by being stepped on. You can prevent vibrations from occurring by sneaking, walking on wool blocks, or using wool blocks to block vibrations. The warning level can increase from any of the Shriekers. It doesn't have to be one specifically. Also, the warning level is specific to the player. The warning level can decrease by one after 10 minutes. After the Shrieker has shrieked, you will get a darkness effect for 12 seconds. This will dim your vision to black. For the Shrieker to summon a Warden, the warning level has to be 4, the light level has to be below 11, and there can't be a Warden within 48 blocks. The Warden is a new mob that only spawns from the Skulk Shriekers. They have a health of 500 and can attack with a melee attack or ranged attack. The ranged attack can pass through blocks. The Warden is now probably the most dangerous mob in the game, as it has a health and attacks are greater than the Wither and the Ender Dragon. The Warden is blind, so it will use hearing and smell. Also, the Warden will have a range of 0 to 150 anger towards each suspect. When the anger reaches 80, the Warden will roar and pursue the target like normal. What angers the Warden is vibrations or if it is attacked. The anger will decay by 1 every second. If the Warden is calm after 60 seconds, they will despawn. You can tell how angry the Warden is by the souls in its chest and the heartbeat. The faster it is moving, the more angry the Warden is. The Warden will give a darkness effect when a player is within 20 blocks. Defeating the Warden will be difficult, especially in a one-on-one -on -one battle. The best idea might be to avoid spawning a Warden, not increase the Warden's anger and wait for them to despawn, or to create a trap using something that makes sound like note blocks into a hole using trapdoors and killing them with iron golems. The Warden only drops a Skull Catalyst and 5 XP when killed. Next is the Ancient City structure. This is a new structure that can be found in the Deep Dark Bio. The ancient city will have most of the same blocks as the deep dark plus deep slate wool and smooth basalt. The center of the ancient city will have a city center that is a frame with reinforced deep slate in it. The reinforced deep slate is a new block but it can't be obtained. 
There is a hidden basement under the city center that will have several different redstone contraptions. There is a piston door that is hidden under a wooden bridge and facing the wall. To activate the piston door, there is a skulk sensor and you will need to make a vibration. There are three different versions of this piston door. One will close after you, another one will need to make a stronger vibration than walking, and the third will stay open until activated again. The other part of the ancient city are that the walls that divide the ancient city and the entrance. There is a part of the ancient city called the ruins that can come in a lot of different versions from chambers, wool, icebox, tall ruins, pillars, and saunas. The ruins is the location where you can find the loot chests. I won't go through every loot item, just the ones that can only be found in the ancient city chest and are new to the game. The first is the echo shard. A compass and eight echo shards can be crafted into a recovery compass. The recovery compass can be used to point in the direction of your last death location. It will spin randomly if you are in the wrong dimension. Next is the disc fragments. Nine of these disc fragments can be crafted together to get a music disc five. The music disc five will be a new item in the wild update. Last is an enchanted book of the new enchantment, the Swift Sneak. The enchanted book will be a random level. The maximum level of Swift Sneak is three and it is a lagging enchantment. The Swift Sneak will increase the movement speed when you are sneaking. Right now with no Swift Sneak, it is 30% of normal walking speed when sneaking. But with Swift Sneak three, this will be a 75% of normal walking speed. This could be useful for navigating the ancient city and avoiding the warden. Now let's get the additions outside the two new biomes. First is the goat horn. Now when a goat rams the player and hits a block, it will drop a goat horn. An adult goat can drop two goat horns. The block they hit has to be one that is naturally generated. It can't be one placed by the player. There are eight different sounds that play from the goat horn. Four of these are only available from the screaming goat. There's a 100% chance for you to get a goat horn in a pillager outpost chest. However, these can be only the ones from the normal goats. A more unusual addition is the boat with chest. This is crafted with a chest in any type of boat. It will have the same amount of inventory slots as a single chest. The chest can be accessed by opening your inventory while paddling or crouching while clicking when out of the boat. The boat with chest can deposit items from the chest if over a hopper or have items deposited in it by a hopper. Next is the new mob, the alley. The alley is a mob that when given an item will search around the player for that item and return it to the player. The alley has one inventory slot. The alley can be used in resource collecting like mining sand to get blocks you break. The alleys can be put on a lead if you want to keep them in a location. The alleys will return items to a note block if it is playing with in the last 30 seconds. This could be used to put blocks into a collection system. The alley is found in two locations, the Woodland Mansion and the Pillager Outpost. With the Pillager Outpost, one to three can spawn in a cage that is found outside the Pillager Outpost. However, the cage may not generate. The Woodland Mansion has a large jail room that is composed of cobblestone. There can be multiple cells with one to three alleys. The Woodland Mansion has a greater chance to have alleys, but it is harder to find. Like the Pillager Outpost, there is a chance that this room won't be a part of the mansion. Also, these locations only spawn the alley at world generation. There are several advancements that have been added to the game. The advancements are birthday song, an alley delivers a cake at a note block, bucket bucket, catch a tadpole in a bucket, it spreads, kill a mob near a skull catalyst, sneak 100, sneak near a skulk sensor or warden to prevent it from detecting you. When the squad hops into town, get each frog variant on a lead. With our powers combined, have all three frog lights in your inventory. You've got a friend in me. Have an alley deliver items to you. Now let's go through the changes and fixes. I just highlighted the most interesting ones. I don't want to go through all the texture changes. Now all leaves can be waterlogged before the water could not go into the leaves. Scaffolding will smelt items at the same rate as bamboo. Enderman skeletons and wither skeletons spawn between light level 0 and 11 in the nether. This is a wider range than before. Last is that minecarts with chest, furnace, TNT, hoppers will drop as an item instead of two items when broken. Hopefully that helps you understand everything new in the wild update thank you for watching and enjoy the update